you made it through a whole cycle. Give yourself a pat on the back. You have made it to the investment cycle. We're going to dive through here for our investment cycle. As I mentioned, this could involve a company that is buying and selling stocks of another company, securities, buying and selling debt. This could also involve buying and selling or just buying and holding until it is disposed of machines, equipment for your company. So it really involves all of that. So we're going to see some items. For example, I'm just going to dive all the way over here. Unrealized gain or loss unavailable for sales security should be classified in OCI. This is something you see in the financial exam. But thinking about this, yeah, this, this, this is dealing with buying and selling stocks. Whereas we've got other things where we're going to see a schedule of investment activity that could very much relate to buying equipment, buying machines to then produce something. So yeah, it's going to tie in with both. Obviously, we'll see a lot in involving securities, right? Dividend and interest income, you buy bonds, you buy stocks, you're going to get dividends and interest. So just tying in both, want to make sure that you are clearly understanding what we're dealing with here. Now, we're going to deal with the account balance, transaction, and presentation and disclosure assertions here. Let's begin. Well, for completeness, we're going to search for unrecorded purchases by examining after year end purchases, making sure that, okay, if we purchased something after year end, making sure that it's not unrecorded, confirm securities held by a custodian. Now, if you have a 401k, if you have stocks, you know, you're not physically holding that stock. Sorry to break it to you. It's, you know, it's not in your possession unless you have a piece of paper or something, or you have your own sort of system where you can hold them. It's Fidelity, Vanguard, Schwab, all these individuals are holding your stocks, these securities. So making sure that the client, if the client is holding stocks with a custodian like that, you as the auditor, make sure that those stocks are actually being held by the custodian. You're going to request information from a counterparty that could likely be the custodian. Or if we on our own went and bought the debt of another company, making sure that, okay, they actually did do that talking to the other company. And lastly, analytical procedures for expected interest earned to actual interest earned. This is a pretty good procedure because we can do a nice little calculation. We could say company bought $10,000 of debt and 2% interest rate. Just do a nice recalculation, just making sure that the interest rate ties out, making sure that because yeah, I mean, like hopefully their systems are working properly and there's no issue, but it's your job to do analytical procedures, recalculations. Um, so this that's something actually will tie in a lot. We'll see. Sure, yeah, get that there. $200. That's what our interest income should be. Obviously, if it's for half the year, we would do divide by two then. So something to take into account. Now, what are we going to deal with for valuation, allocation, and accuracy for the balance of investments? This is pretty important, right? Making sure that the investments you have, the stocks and bonds you're holding as an investment are properly valued, allocated, and accurate. You want to put investments by category and agree to the general ledger. Just do a nice little bit there. Review schedule of investment activity. I'm just going to see what you bought. If you look in the brokerage, you want to you want to tie the brokerage statement to what you see in the financial statements. Corroborated year and fair values from published sources or independent broker dealer. Well, if they say they have 10 shares at $20 each, you want to tie that out and see if that's how it looks on the Bloomberg terminal. Or you know, if you don't have a Bloomberg terminal, you look on uh, Google, you just Google the fair value of the stock. Recalculate year end investments at amortized cost. Just similar there, you're going to do recomputations of everything, making sure it's properly valued. Just similar to PP&E where you want to recalculate depreciation expense. You're going to look for significant influence and impairment, making sure that if uh, they have an investment, now this wouldn't be an investment in uh, something you could buy in the open stock market because guess what? Prices go up and down there. But let's say you buy an investment in some private company. Well, you're not going to see the prices of the stock go up and down there. But if that company took a massive hit, you may have to write down that investment. There's whole departments for that. It's not our job here for the exam to understand the intricacies of that concept. And lastly, assess the assumptions and market variables overall, making sure that the stocks are free from error, the investments are free from error, they are properly allocated, and they are properly valued. For existence and occurrence, you want to confirm securities. So they're being held by someone, make sure they exist. You want to physically see them securities or you know, see where they are. You want an examination of securities on hand. Well, maybe the company is holding some. Just take a look at them. Perform analytical procedures as well. For rights and obligations, you want to confirm the securities because same thing. If you do a confirmation of securities, you can ask whoever's holding them, hey, does this entity have full rights to this? You're just holding it for them, right? You're just holding it for them. They didn't pledge it to anyone. You want to examine those securities on hand. So just whether they have the securities on hand or with a broker or custodian, it's equally important. Lastly, examining broker advices and verifying ownership. Really kind of the same thing there. Just whoever's holding the securities, you really got to investigate those, make sure they're not pledged. Time into transactional assertions for completeness. We want to perform analytical procedures on the reasonableness of dividend and interest income. That's kind of what I did here. Yeah, analytical procedures all around. 
never a shortage of those good old analytical procedures. For cutoff, you want to review before and after year end. Just make sure that if we bought it on 1231, it's reflected in that year. We bought it next year, it's reflected in the next year. Making sure that any interest or dividend income earned is reflected in the proper period that it was earned. For our valuation, allocation, and accuracy related to buying and selling of stocks, because remember, this is the account balance tying into, okay, this is just the point in time in which we are saying this is what the stock is worth. Transactions, making sure that the proper buying and selling or receiving of dividend, I'd say more so receiving dividend income and interest income is proper there. We want to analytical procedures on expected gains, losses, and amortization. We want to recalculate dividend and interest income. Again, pretty uh, important concept there. And then compare to credit rating agency. This as well, you want to make sure that you are comparing, you're talking to a credit agency. Moody's, we've got different uh, agencies. I don't know how familiar you are with that. Not too important for us though. But making sure that any investments we have are properly valued if we are receiving a dividend income from a company and then we go see, well, they actually have an awful credit rating. They may default. They may go out of business soon. That is something we should take into account because maybe you shouldn't be valuing that stock as much as you are. For our existence and occurrence, we want to perform analytical procedures on the reasonableness of dividend and interest income. And then for understandability and classification, review the transactions for proper classification. If this is something you've seen in the financial exam, dealing with that. If not, no worries too much, but really, I would say not to get into this too much, but think about it like, is it a current or non-current investment? That's really, you know, we've got different classifications we've got available for sale, trading, and held to maturity securities, but just, is it properly classified with your intentions? Are your intentions to trade it and buy it and sell it, you know, in the next foreseeable future? Or are you holding it or are you holding it available for sale? Different classifications. Also, obviously, you're not going to classify uh, investments in stock as debt. That's something you'd make sure to classify properly. For presentation and disclosure, you want to ensure that required disclosures are included. Just read those footnotes. You see a lot of the same items there. Read required disclosures. For existence and occurrence, you want to compare to audit evidence to determine occurrence. See, look at the actual buying and selling documents from the brokerage to make sure it actually occurred. And then you want to, for rights and obligations, inquire of management, read the loan agreements and board minutes to determine if any of these assets, these investments, stocks, bonds are actually pledged as collateral. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material. We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.